How's it going YouTube? This is Wake Run Collapse. Welcome to 150 packs of Awakened Heroes. This is Japanese Crimson Invasion. We're going to be seeing five booster boxes open in this video today. And if you like what you see in this video and you're new to the channel, not only would I recommend that you subscribe and enable notifications and like the video and comment and all that other stuff, but most importantly, if you end up enjoying this video and love the sizable amount of content that you have to look forward to with all these wonderful Japanese booster packs, make sure you come back here tomorrow, uh, because if it is not September 30th today, uh, then you don't have to wait at all, as I'm going to be doing this exact same feature with Ultra Dimensional Beasts, which is the other half of Japanese Crimson Invasion. But for now, that's enough talking without any action. Let's crack into box number one, which is technically box number eight, as I have opened seven out of the 12 boxes from this booster case already on the channel. And now I've got five more to go. I've spent plenty of time featuring the artwork and showing a bunch of the other stuff that goes on with these, uh, with these sets. Uh, Obviously, if you have seen any uh, amount of uh, openings for this particular expansion, you've already seen plenty in terms of hollows, commons, uncommons, GXs, and probably a few full arts as well, as these booster boxes, while being a lot cheaper than English boxes, uh, did carry a guaranteed full art inside of them. Uh, so that is pretty darn exciting for me. Uh, for this opening, because we have 150 packs to go, and because these packs only have 5 cards apiece, I am going to attempt to make my life a lot easier. Instead, do 2 packs at a time. It just seems like the honest, reasonable thing to do. Uh, I will only be sleeving full arts or better as we go, so let's dive into this. We've got Minchino, Staryu, Salandit, Alolan Marowak Hollow, a Gladion, Alolan Geodude, a Remoraid Carablast, Octillery, and an Alolan Graveler. So the cool thing about opening two packs at a time with a set like this is there are no inserts. You don't have to throw out those silly pamphlets like you do with the uh, with a lot of the X and Y expansions. It just slows the process down. With this, we can be sped up. So we've got a Molga, Shellos, Gastrodon, a Type Null Hollow, a Peeping Red Card, a Staravia, Chimeco, Skiddo, Starmie, and Registeel. So yeah, look, two packs. Really doing two packs, that's why there's no crazy card trick, because they could both have hollows in them. Uh, slot number four can feature a hollow, an uncommon, or something better than a hollow. And that can come in consecutive packs. So here we've got Punkaboo, Cacnea, Starly, a Go Goat Hollow right there, uh, Fighting Memory, a Carablast, Corfish, Haunter, Gorgeist, and Cacturn. Oh, come on. Why no cut? Why no cut? You're doing so well, and then you just freaked out. I don't know what the deal was with that. That was weird. Anyway, so we've got Numel, Cubone. Oh, I guess a card got stuck in there. Uh, Salazzle Hollow, a Counter Catcher, Ghastly, Aeron, Remoraid, Crawdont, and Laron. So what is our stuck card? It's just a common, and it is a Staryu. In the name of not having to slice open 150 individual packs, that's going to happen sometimes, guys. So here we've got Minchino, Skiddo, uh, Sinchino, a Buzzwool GX, looking so strong, a Camerupt, Salandit, Cacnea, Staravia, an S Cavalier, and a Gladion. I know it's a weird concept that opening the packs two at a time actually saves this much time, but where Japanese packs are just so stingy to open sometimes, it really does. Uh, Staravia, Carablast, Chimeco, Cacturn, Laron, Shellos, Haunter, Skiddo, an Agron Hollow, and a Psychic Memory. 
bunch of packs number 13 and 14. Uh, obviously, as I have opened many a booster pack of this set already on the channel, 210 before this video started to be exact, I will be spoiling uh, what is a new card and what is not, so uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, Aeron, Pokeboo, Corfish, that, for instance, is a new card. We need to set that over there for a second and finish out the rest of the pack before... Oh! And a Kartana GX as well, before we can get back to the Buzzwall GX Full Art. Very nice. Great not to have, have to wait too long to get a new card for the expansion. I actually have struggled with a couple of duplicates for Awakened Heroes already, uh, so this is a great start to everything. I'm going to zoom in right there, show you 52 out of 50, the super rare version. I still need the Sil Valley full art for uh, super rares, and that will actually complete that section of my Awakened Heroes collection. So I'm definitely hoping to see that sooner rather than later. I don't really want to be terrified going into box number 12 that I might not complete the super rares. Because, I mean, you can say what you will about the hyper rares and the challenges that are posed by you know, constantly having more and more boxes needed and more and more investment needed to complete those those portions of expansions. But with a guaranteed full art or better in every box, I'm going to stop reading the names for a second. I think it's only reasonable to hope and expect uh, that things will work out for that. Clearly, the guy on the moped at 10.30 at night doesn't agree with me. Like, could that thing be any louder? I thought he was flying a really tiny propeller plane over my house. And downshifting it. In any event, great start already. This is actually going to be encouraging to me to let me know, hey, you can kind of take your foot off the brake a little bit. It's okay to power through these openings. You know, because you guys have seen this all before. A lot of you here just for the polls. Some of you are here for the commentary because uh, I tend to talk about weird stuff and uh, some of you do really seem to enjoy that. That's the benefit of not having this absurdly large uh, following that a lot of people uh, have uh, attained for themselves. Is that I'm not held to the same standard and generally people won't call me out because, man, your content really wasn't what it usually is if I have a, a video where it's a little bit out of whack. Which is probably what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, by the way, if you hear me occasionally wince, uh, I hurt my hip today. Uh, I think it's just a rep repetitive thing. I don't remember specifically hurting it. So uh, if it seems like I'm grimacing in pain, I am, but I'm going to be fine. I don't need it replaced or anything. Not for a couple more years in any event. Let's get a Haunter, Skiddo, Chimeco, a Salazzle Hollow, a Staraptor, that's who you are, Mawile, Staryu, Starly. <laughs> Now you know why this set is weird. Anyways, uh, so what I do want to talk about is something that I uh, that I had an opportunity to see for myself. It's relevant to what we're talking about uh, before. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, Nappy and Shady's Soul Link. I don't watch LPs as a general rule on YouTube because it is very time consuming. I don't have an issue, obviously, with anybody who chooses to uh, create that content uh, for their fan base I, would be a ridiculous thing to have a problem with. Uh, and I have enjoyed it before from time to time, uh, but right now, and for the last probably few months to a year, in terms of LPs, I really only watch the Soul Link, uh, because it's an opportunity to see two of my favorite creators, uh, and they tend to make things nice and fun. So, Shady Penguin, um, and you can, you know, debate amongst yourselves or however you would like, 
uh, you can talk about whether he deserved this or not, uh, has received a lot of negativity regarding his negativity in the most recent episode that has been uploaded. Now, I don't claim to watch all of Shady's content, I don't. Uh, he does a lot of stuff that I'm not interested in, and that is no reflection on him, it's just, I like the guy, I like his content, I enjoy the stuff that I'm able to budget the time for. Now, but he's taken a severe amount of heat for the way he uh, he handled himself uh, in the most recent episode of The Soul Link. As we finish out box number one, I will say that, in my view, some of that is warranted. I mean, he really wasn't putting his best foot forward. Clearly, he was, you know, having some struggles outside of the video making process and outside of, you know, independent of what was happening in the Soul Link. Um, it doesn't necessarily excuse his behavior, but I think we can achieve a greater understanding of it. Um, what I was really surprised by... Um, by the way, we're not doing box-by-box box recaps. That would be ludicrous. Uh, what I was really surprised by uh, was the extent to which people reacted in the comment section. And I think it brings to light something that's pretty important, and I'd like to talk about it for a second. Uh, I am fine with users holding their content creators accountable for their actions, uh, but I have also found that some people take this way too far. Like, I was noticing some insulting commentary in the comment section. Now, if you felt insulted by how Shady acted, then that is your opinion. And people may not share it, and people may share it. Uh, but to, in turn, insult the man um, who's creating the content for you, uh, and most importantly, and this is the one that really blew my mind, hold him to a standard that you would never hold people in your real life, I think is kind of ludicrous. Like, Shady's been making videos for years, and many content creators have made videos for years. And to see people jump into the comment section uh, after he has himself a bad day and say, you know, after that performance, I lost all respect for you. All my respect for you has gone out the window. He didn't, like, insult a race of people. He didn't start swearing at his viewers. He didn't do something that's unforgivable. He had a bad episode. He did some careless things. He made some mistakes. He didn't have the greatest personality and didn't deal with it as well as he might have on a better day. But to say that somebody has lost all respect for them or that they're abandoning the the soul link and I'm you know I'm gonna leave a comment and tell you how much this has hurt me I think it's unreasonable to hold people to a standard uh, that they can't possibly live up to I mean think about the people that are in your own lives uh, you might consider you know a parent or friend or or you know anybody in any other capacity would you, like, let, let's say, you know what, let's take high school, for instance, because I feel like it's a, uh, it's a similar time frame that we can talk about. Uh, let's take high school, for instance. So, Shady's been making videos for years. Let's address the four years of high school. If you had a friend, uh, like, let's say, let's say you had a, even a best friend, or just a regular friend, however you'd like to treat it. If you had a friend, and, you know, you got along really well with them, and you admired them, and they admired you, you guys, you know, hit it off for whatever reason, and one day they had a bad day, and your connection with that person was less than great. Would you stop being friends with that person simply because they had a bad day and didn't have anything to do with you? Would you just disown all the work that you put into that friendship? That doesn't make any sense. How invested were you in it to begin with if you're willing to say, oh wow, well that person had a bad day and didn't behave very well and then apologized for it, but no, you know, F this person, I can't possibly be associated with them anymore. Like, are you kidding me? Are you going to do that to somebody in your real life? How silly would that be to hold somebody to that, you know unattainable standards simply because they're a content creator on YouTube, and this is the stuff that they put out for you to watch. I don't know, it just doesn't make much sense to me.
And I think putting people on that type of pedestal and then allowing yourself to be that disappointed when they have an off day is such a recipe for an unhealthy relationship with your content creator that it just really just confuses and astounds me. As we get an Alolan Golem full art, so that's cool. It's a duplicate, but it is cool. It is cool. I send gold plus a cacturn. I mean, similarly speaking, uh, if and I, you know, thankfully because of the size of my audience, this is not something that I experience. Like, if I had a crap video, like a really crap video, I didn't, I didn't uh, address people the right way. I didn't, uh, I maybe you know lashed out a little bit at the comment section for whatever reason. If you would, you know, take that, take that instance, and use it as a as a consistent and lifelong viewer to unsubscribe, and you know, leave a long-winded comment in the comment section. I don't really understand somebody's place for doing that. It doesn't compute for me. Like, you're going to leave eight lines of dialogue in the comment section about uh, how I'm not the content creator that you knew, and, you know, I've, you've lost all respect for me and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that a content creator, especially on Shady's level, uh, who is a very kind man, uh, somebody like him uh, who has spent so much time dedicated to his viewers and the fact that the fact that you could consider all of that hard work and all of that kindness to be null and void because they had a bad video shows that your investment really wasn't there in the first place. Or that you need to understand that People are fallible. You know, he's just a he's just a guy. I mean, he's gotta he's gotta go out there and live his life as well. Uh, he's married. They've got a dog. I think. I think he's got a mortgage too. He's got a lot of stuff going on. It's a very you know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, and sometimes when you have bad days, they snowball. But. I was just, I was really, as much as I knew that he, this was not his best day, and it wasn't a, a greatly enjoyable video, uh, I was really taken aback by how bothered people were that Shady could have a bad day, like he wasn't allowed to. I don't know, I've talked about it enough, that's just, that's my two cents. Had a little blip on the radar with opening these packs at the beginning, but since then, I think the uh, the double pack thing is working out pretty well. Should keep this video safely under an hour, provided we don't pull wild and crazy stuff from here on out. So we got Hunter, Skiddo, Aeron, Cartana GX, uh, Cacturn, a. Pumpkaboo, Corfish, Mawile, S Cavalier, and Peeping Red Card. I find that my openings go faster when I'm talking about that kind of stuff, too. I don't know why they just do. Uh, Cacnea, Cubone, Ghastly, Lowland Graveler, Crawdont, Sinchino, Numel, Minchino, a Gengar Hollow. And a fighting memory in the last two packs of box number nine slash box number two for this video, depending on how you look at it. Here we've got Staryu, Salandit, an Alolan Geodude, Camerupt, Starmie, Remoraid, Carablast, a Molga, a Type Null Hollow, and a Counter Catcher.
All right, so that doesn't feel so bad at all thus far. We are 40% of the way done. I actually have some more real talk for you, but I want to get this box open and started first. It is slightly pursuant to what I was talking about before, but not like not like all that much. Oh man. That hip is gonna hurt in the morning. Man, is it gonna hurt. So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret as we dig into the third box, uh, hoping for an ultra rare that's not a metal energy and a hyper rare that's not a Kartana. Uh, hyper rare still valley would be the dream scenario. That's, that's what we want for a hyper rare. So many water types. So many Kartanas. That's getting crazy. Uh, I'll, I'll let you behind the curtain a little bit. Uh, I gotta say, uh, <laughs> and th this is gonna sound really weird, uh, because obviously I love uh, making this content for you guys, but going into this video, I just I could not convince myself to get started. I was really, for some reason, just not looking forward to the process. Obviously, I'm excited to pull the cards, and I've since I started my YouTube channel, I've never opened a pack off camera. I have no intentions of doing that. Uh, but for the first time in a long time, I've, it's, I've never really, you know, or at least not recently, I haven't been feeling so averse to making this video. I mean, I knew once I got going, once I, you know, started going into the process and talking and and opening my packs and opening my boxes, pulling cool cards, I would just, I would find my stride, but I just could not get it started today. I'm really not sure why. Felt it a little bit for the past couple of days, to be honest. So I got a Go Goat Hollow there. I think it has something to do with the timing for my trip and how uh, things have uh, shaken down at work. Uh, because before today, uh, I, you know, obviously had been on vacation, but I'd been on a go-cation. It was very much a do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. And then I came back and I've worked eight of the last nine days. And I mean full shifts, like, you know, 10-hour shifts at work. Um, so I think that might play a role in why I wasn't so, you know, jazzed to sit down and film 150-pack opening, even though I knew, like, I had to do it tonight. I had to do it tonight. I'm definitely going to have to, you know, transfer this and start the upload tonight, too. There's really no other option to get this done. But man, did I dread it. Oh, my. You know, a card like a Countercatcher Ultra Rare really helps out. <laughs> I gotta say, there's a psychic memory back there really helps out. We got the counter energy, now we've got the counter catcher from this set, and that is wonderful. Wonderful stuff. Oh, it's mighty pretty. Look at that. So we got 60 out of 50 on that ultra rare. Uh, I think this is a decently valuable card. But I don't know for sure. I think it's decently valuable. Uh, I think the one that we're going to end up missing, because no expectations of pulling another ultra rare, I think we're going to end up missing like a warp energy or something like that. I think it's warp energy. Uh, but in any event, we've struck gold with another awesome, true ultra rare. And look at that definition on that card. so fine. I've probably mentioned this before at some point, but uh, I did actually collect cards before Pokemon. Um, like, before Pokemon existed. Uh, I would occasionally uh, collect um, like baseball cards from random sets. Like, we'd go down to a local card shop, and if he had like crazy overstock of 
like a, a new Topps football set and was selling them for like really, really cheap. Um, like my brother and I, we would, you know, put down however much money it was. It could have been much because we were younger. Uh, we would, um, and we would, you know, get go together and get a booster box or something like that. And then just open the cards. We collected a lot of like Marvel cards too. Um, the name of them eludes me now. Um, some of the sets though were really cool, and in, in in my experience, I guess. I bet if I went back and dug them out of storage and went through them again, I would really enjoy looking through them again. There was a particular type of card. Now I just I can't remember what they call them. Uh, but I remember collecting, you know, Ultimate Spider-Man sets and X-Men sets. I just, I can't remember some of the specific names of them. Uh, and for a while I collected, oh, I gotta move that up there, hold on. Yes, I did just put a card back, pretend you didn't see it. Um, for a while, uh, I collected and played in the Star Wars customizable card game. I would go to like regional events and I would just play with my deck and I wouldn't, oh god, at least I pronounced the E. Um, and it wasn't particularly good, but I would occasionally have a good showing. You know, I'd occasionally break even. It was more fun, it was an experience for me, so. Not saying I'm going to start getting competitive with this, because I have Japanese cards and I'm not good at this game. I'm uh, just saying that there's, you know, precedence for the card collecting aspect. I used to love the idea of completing sets too. Ooh, Sil Valley. Okay, so now that you know we've gotten our, our great pull out of the third box, and there's two boxes left to go. Hold on, I think I gotta check one there. I nip it. No, I don't think I did. There's two boxes left to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and go on record and say that if we were to get a perfect two boxes from here, uh, the best thing in my book would be to pull a super rare Sil Valley and a hyper rare Sil Valley. I definitely expect the first one. I do not expect the second. Uh, in fact, getting two ultra rares out of the 12 boxes uh, means that I may not see another hyper rare. As much of a bummer as that would be, uh, you have to prepare yourself for that eventuality. And if we do not pull either of the Sil Valleys in box 11, I will be scared. Because as much as this is fun and a card is a card, you gotta protect your investments. You wanna look to pull the most popular, the most valuable cards. Not only for the procedure pulling them, but like it helps with the wallet. And it's not like they're hitting the brakes or anything with some of these releases. I mean, we get GX Battle Boost right around the corner. That's about to happen, which is insane to me. Uh, and then Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon come in December, but before then, they have like these like trainer box things that I think are coming out in mid or late November, like around Thanksgiving time, uh, that are going to have like random cards in a deck. But there's also a premium version that includes booster packs from Sun and Moon. It's all very complicated. Forgive us, we're silly, lowly Japanese collectors. Just trying to get by. Last hollow pull is going to be, ooh, a Lolan Golem GX. Pretty cool. Actually, you know what? Let me know in the comment section if we're all the way out here. If for some reason I know that no one is subscribed to see old cards that aren't Pokemon. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in seeing 
maybe some cards, maybe a single video uh, that features like, I don't know, some of the old sets that I might have collected as a kid, because I bet I can find them. Or just like some of the cards, or I could talk about them and be like, hey, this is from blank. Uh, like this is from my Overpower set uh, that I opened a booster box of while I was sitting in my mom's van uh, at a baseball game that my older brother was playing in, but I didn't care because I had all my packs. Like, we could talk about that kind of stuff. If you guys would want to see that in a video, just let me know. And if you don't, hey, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, I am 100% uh, pleased uh, to relive the memories of my childhood without actually filming it for anybody else. So as we dig into box number four, the second to last box I may ever open for this set, as it is the completion of the case, uh, I wonder if our good card is going to come in the first half of the box again. It's happened three boxes in a row. Alolan Golem GX. Not bad. Oh, come on. There we go. So we've got a Haunter. Skiddo, Aeron, Gorgeist, Cacturn, Pumpkaboo, Corfish, a Mawile, Salazzle Hollow, and an Escavalier. So in a big opening like this with all the uh, other packs preceding it, you can see how the smaller sets do kind of lessen the experience just a little bit. There's a Regigigas Hollow. It'd be nice to have a little more variety. A little bit of bigger set. Make it feel like it's not all about the hyper rares. It's not all about the ultra rares. It's not all about the super rares. Because as it stands, there's what? There's 12 uh, full arts or better uh, in each set Awakened Heroes and Ultra Dimensional Beasts. Because there's 5 super. Four hyper and three ultra, so that's twelve cards, uh, which balloons the set to sixty-two. It means that those special cards, which are only one per box, uh, make up twenty percent of the set. That's a little too high for me. There's a type null. Uh, what if instead, and if it didn't respond to the other comment baiting question before, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. What if they included alternate artworks of former GXs without making new full arts and hyper rares for them? Kind of like what GX Battle Boost is doing by uh, printing those like Lunala and Solgaleo GXs with the artwork that uh, the English collectors got, uh, but we had not. And that is interesting. And it's cool, because it's so jacked, but two in the same video. Another Buzzwool GX Full Art, and again, in the left-hand side of the box. That is pretty crazy. Like I said, I didn't really expect another Hyper Rare uh, to follow. But it would have been nice, so now I'm definitely hoping we get that Sil Valley in box 12. Let's leave that and put that back over there. Because you've already seen it, we don't need to waste time with it. Um, but what would you say about putting alternate art for already existing GXs in the set uh, to add to, I don't know, to add to the fun a little bit? Like, not a ton, but maybe, maybe two per set. Like, do you think that a set like this would be better if they included, like, not even something, like, incredibly, like, playable or something like that? Like, what if this set had... Also, an alternate art of a Tapu Koko, and an alternate art of, well, Lycanroc is a terrible example, uh, but maybe an alternate art of, like, a Machamp, or something something like that. Uh, no extra full arts, no nothing like that, but, but helped to spice up the pulls between multiple boxes. I think it'd be fun, but, you know, I buy a case every time, so maybe my, uh, maybe my opinion does not work quite as well.
given that given that circumstance. Anyways, Numel, Gastrodon, Corfish, Staraptor, I almost called it Superior, that would have been slightly wrong. Uh, Octillery, Pumpkaboo, a Shellos, Cubone, Registeel, and Starmie. Man, I'm going to have to rest this hip. It is flaring up just sitting here. Which is just a sad state of affairs. That's how you know that you're watching an old Pokemon card collector. He's getting hip pains by sitting down. He's walking a lot of the day today anyways. I'm on that double Stardust grind, my friends. I got like... I'd say a respectable amount. 90,000 dust today. The hatches helped a lot. I've hatched like, what is it, four Dratini from 10k eggs? We got Chimeco, Cinchino, Staryu, Regigigas Hollow, Escavalier, Emolga, Staravia, Salandit, uh, Gladion, and a Staraptor. This is so tongue twisty. Why do they do that? I know the translations don't work the same in Japanese, but sometimes it seems like they're just laughing at us. <laughs> Look what we made him say. Uh, Corfish, Starly, Remoraid, Agron Hollow, Cacturn, Pumpkaboo, Shellos, Gastrodon, Octillery, and a Psychic Memory. We've only got one more box to go to hopefully pull a special Silvalli. Uh, we did pretty darn bad when it came to hunting for the shiny Silvallis. There's a regular one, though, so that's pretty nifty. So I'm hoping we can turn this around a little bit. I mean, we did pull that new Buzzwall twice. Uh, we pulled an Alolan Golem, uh, which is a pretty low-value repeat. And we did pull that awesome Ultra Rare, too. Man, I love this Hollow. So that'll do it for the second to last box. Okay guys, I need a good laugh when I look in the comment section. It needs to be without explanation, uh, but there's there's somebody out there, somewhere, who if for whatever reason you're watching 38 minutes in, might have a really nice laugh about this. If you are all the way to the final box, if you are here watching this, enjoying the content, what I want you to do is go into the comment section, <laughs> in all caps, Leave a comment that says, we want to eat. W just, just, we want to eat. Just leave that as a comment. Oh, it'll crack me up. Be like a whole bunch of people chanting, we want to eat. We want to eat. I really should have saved that for Ultra Dimensional Beasts because of the Guzzlord, but I thought of it now. We're playing it now. If you two are watching right now, one of you is going to have to explain it to the other. Alright, so our final box is upon us for Awakened Heroes. Let's see what the crap is happening with that pack. That was... See that? That was gruesome. Oh yeah, it's not even popping open either. Just a troublesome pack. 
we're probably going to get it in the first half of the box. I'm guessing on the left-hand side, because that's what's been happening. Uh, so we're really just crossing our fingers for some Sil Valley action. That is not Sil Valley, but that's okay. We can wait. We can be patient. Now I've got another shot at a big guy named... Oh, it's a Gengar. Gengar's cool. In the other set, uh, we've done very well avoiding duplicates, so I feel like that's not going to last. So I think that Ultra Dimensional Beast uh, will definitely be featuring some cards that we already have. Uh, I might only pull two new cards from that set. So let's think about it. We've got two Hyper Rares. We've got one Ultra Rare. So I'm thinking maybe from that set we're going to get the new Guzzlord. We're going to get three repeat Super Rares, hopefully one of them being Lusamine. Uh, and then we'll get some other random card, like another Ultra Rare or something like that. Maybe we'll get the Ultra Rare... I don't know. I don't know what Ultra Rare we might get. There's an Alolan Marowak, though. Because what, what do we have so far? We've got, yeah, for Ultra Dimensional Beasts, we have Hyper Rares of Gyarados and Kartana, we have the Counter Energy, and then we've got every Super Rare except Guzzlord. Yeah. So four Super Rares in an Ultra Rare. That's what we're calling for the next set. But the task is at hand. What are we going to get out of this last box? Amolga, Numel, Gastrodon, Crawdon, Cacturn, Corphish, Pumpkaboo, Shellos, a Regigigas Hollow, and a Fighting Memory. Come on out. There we go. We've got a Coveny. Staryu, Ghastly, Octillery, Counter Catcher, Remoraid, Carablast, Haunter, Staraptor, and Camerot. Alright, guys. There's three more packs on the left hand side of the box. Is this next pack going to have our full art in it? Is it? So we've got a Mawile, a Skiddo, and a Numel. Is it the next card? Ah, oh, that would have been cool to call that. It's a Buzzwall GX, though. We'll take it. So let's remove our stack real quick. Neaten the place up a bit. And dig into our last, what is it, 16 packs? We have 16 packs to go. 16 out of 150. And look at you guys. Look at you guys going strong. I'm proud of you. Even if you just skipped ahead to this part of the video, I'm still proud of you. You clicked in the first place. I can respect that. Oh, come on. So we got a Cacnea, Chimeco, uh, Cinchino, Agron, Starmie, Remoraid, Gastrodon, Mawile, Graveler, the Alolan kind and a fighting memory. So our last box actually is going to wait till the right hand side. You know, that sounds great to me. I'm cool with that. I want the suspense. I need the fun. I need those all important minutes watched. So Lazo Hollow. Got 12 more packs to go. That's it, and that's all. What's happening with that? Here we go. So it's Staryu, Amolga, a Staravia, Alolan Graveler, Gladion, Salandit, Corfish, Starly, Gogoat Hollow, and a Cacturn. So the final 10 packs. This is what it comes down to. We've opened 350 total packs of Awakened Heroes in the final 10. is what we've come down to, hunting for that all-elusive 
full art sill valley that I do not want to have to buy in the aftermarket. Uh, Remorade, Pumpkaboo, Shellos. Looks like I'm going to have to. Ah, that's a bummer. Alolan Golem full art number three. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I was I actually found a uh, a source that I could have bought uh, a few of these from that really wasn't too pricey, and I was hoping to only pull one of them so that I could supplement a sale video with that. But now, unfortunately, uh, we are tasked with unloading two of these. The good news is it's an Alolan form. It's a full art. It's a golem. And honestly, it looks pretty cool. I just wish you were a Sil Valley. It is a little disappointing to not finish a super rare set out of a booster case. That cost I don't know how much. How much did this cost? Hang on, I, I gotta I gotta think this one out. Eight hundred twelve six. A little over four hundred bucks plus shipping for the case, I think. Because it's like 35, 36 a box, there's 12 of them. So if it's 35 a box, it's like 420 plus shipping. To not get a full art sale valley out of the whole case, it's a little weird. It's only half set, like, I think you get one. Oh well, it's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Uh, ultimately, we will hopefully do much better with ultra dimensional beasts. Ah, uh, there's a troll valley at the end there. Uh, in terms of overall set completion, uh, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with our progress with that so far. Come on. Can I go through for you? You're probably just going to have like a type null hollow inside and nothing else. It's going to have like a type null hollow inside and nothing else. Weird that that keeps happening. I have to take a breather after this one. You give me a little Lolan Marowak just for fun. I'd be fine with that. Ah, it's a go go. And in our final two packs of the case, final two packs of the video, there will be a recap that follows afterwards, but I need to take some time to actually sort those cards out. Uh, I will not be sleeving them until after all the videos are done, because I need to get this thing moving in Movie Maker. We've got Chelos, Ghastly, a Minchino, Gorgeist, Starmie, Cubone, a little Geodude, Aeron, a Gladion, see what I did there, and the final card, ah, thank you for blessing me in the last pack, my favorite hollow of the set, the Alolan Marowak Hollow. Pretty cool stuff overall. Would have liked a slightly better distribution, but that's the way it goes. I will gleefully take my guaranteed full art in every box over the way things were before. So we're going to stack this up, cut the video for a quick moment, and come back with things slightly better sorted for a full recap. Okie dokie friends, I have returned. I have not sorted the hollows. We're just going to show the huge pile of hollows that we were able to pull in this video from our five booster boxes of Awakened Heroes. These will all get sleeved in due time, but... Oh, there's another one. Wanted to make sure I showed them all off just for the sake of completion. So you can see exactly what you would be pulling from five booster boxes. If you choose to make that purchase for yourself. So we got a perfect, perfect distribution of GXs. I got four of each. Got the full play set of Alolan Golem, because that's going to come in handy. The full play set of Buzzwole. The full play set of Kartana. And the full play set of Sil Valley. I thought that was pretty cool. I did not know that going back and sorting it, but once it actually was done, I was like, oh, that's a nice little treat. And then in terms of our overall pulls, we've got four regular full arts in Buzzwall, Alolan Golem, Buzzwall, and Alolan Golem. That, uh, yeah. 
But the crown jewel, of course, of this opening was the Counter Catcher Ultra Rare. Very, very stoked about this. Thank you so much for checking out the video and sticking with me for this extended view of a Japanese set. Make sure you hit the like button if you've not done so already. It really helps support me as a content creator. Uh, as much as, you know, watching things like advertisements in the videos and, and following me on social media and stuff, that like button is so easy. It's so easy, just waiting to be pressed. And when you press it, it's like a vote that says, this content was good enough for me to watch. You know, it, just, it doesn't take much. It makes a big difference. And make sure you're doing it with other content creators, too. It really helps to give them a boost. Thanks for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you all back here tomorrow when we do the exact same thing with Ultra Dimensional Beasts as we hunt my boy in his glorious full art form.